Thank you for joining. I'm Sherry from Sunflowers and Petals. Today we are exploring bike options for heavier cyclists. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button below and also subscribe. I have with me the owner and founder of Zai's Bikes, Joan Denizo. Welcome, Joan. Hi, Sherry. It's great to be here and to get a chance to encourage everybody to get moving. Well, that's why I started this blog, because I think cycling should be open to everybody. Great. So what made you decide to launch a line of bicycles for heavier cyclists? Well, I've always been a, a heavier person, and it was about 15 years ago, and I just said I need to get moving. I need to, you know, find a way to exercise, and the only thing that I ever loved to do was riding a bike, and so I started looking, and... At that time, like people would say, oh yeah, we do heavy bikes. If you're 200 pounds, you can, you can ride our bike. And you know, there's a lot of people that weigh more than 200 pounds, a yes. lot of people. And I just decided we needed a store that was focused on the joy of bike riding without body size getting in the way and being a barrier. Well, that, that's great because it's definitely needed. So being a woman in a very male dominated industry, uh, did you find that you encountered any barriers or do you continue to find barriers? Well, I, I'll answer this with as a yes, but I mean, clearly there are barriers, you know, and there's, I've always attributed them to my weight, but certainly being a woman didn't help. But my whole way of being is just going for the positive. So I did encounter a bunch of amazing men and women who saw, they understood my mission and they were excited to, to help me grow it. So, you know, the negative people are everywhere, but the positive are there too. So that's what I just focus on. <laughs> oh, great. And so what is the different types of bikes that Zyze has in their line? Well, right now we've got three primary bikes. Actually, we've got four, but um, the first one is, it's a new leaf and it's a classic bike. It's kind of like a hybrid between a, a cruiser and a mountain bike. And, and we also have, um, it's the time of your life, which is a, is a crank forward. So it's a lot easier for people with balance issues or anybody that's, um, doesn't have the, the freedom of leg movement. It's easier to get on and off. Okay. Um, we also have a 29er, which is um, surprisingly not as popular as our other bikes. And I honestly believe that the reason for that is because the weight capacity on the 29er is only 450 pounds and all our other bikes is 550. And our customers don't weigh that much, but being a heavy person and our weight does this because that's what happens. You decide I'm going to try to lose weight. You gain it's everybody. It. Yeah. Okay. Well, I somehow thought I was special. But <laughs> You're not that special. <laughs> um, so uh, I think people just like to know that they're going to always be safe, which is why they buy the heavier okay. duty bike. But our newest bike is the Yonder and it's a trail bike and it's got a wider bottom bracket and a wider Q factor because many, many heavy people have a wider stance. So they're a lot more comfortable on that. Well, that really leads us into the next question. So what key features and components should a heavier rider look for when purchasing a bike? And didn't even dawn on me the Q factor and the and looking at that. So why don't you explain what, what to look for? Well, I think the primary component when you're looking for a bike is this is it has to be a steel frame. Aluminum can break. I mean, if it's thick, it probably won't but probably is not a great option if you're bar barreling down the hill at 300 pounds or whatever you say, right? You just don't want that probably. So the steel, I mean, steel won't break. Um, and we like chromoly steel because it's super, uh, it's easy to ride, you maneuver it well, and it's just, it's a really strong rust steel, rust proof steel. Mm -hmm. So that's a really big one. We also, you know, make sure that every component, because we don't specially build our components because we want people to be able to take these bikes and get them fixed in a shop locally if they need right. to, whatever. Um, so we use, we use uh, standard components, but we use the strongest we can get. So, you know, really, um, you know, 36 spokes, obviously, uh, wider rims, uh, 
heavier thread count tires. So they're really uh, puncture resistant. Um, we just take time. The, seat, the seats are a big issue. Everybody says, oh, your saddle's comfortable. And our saddles are great for about 90% of the people. Okay. The problem with a bike saddle, as you and all your listeners know, is it depends on your sit bones. So for some people, they may need to change the saddle. But for most riders, we have a great saddle. But we also... I'm sorry. I know we're on a time frame, but <laughs> we, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cut me off. I'm talking too much. Um, <laughs> a lot of heavier riders, they get on the bike saddle and they, they turn left and, and their seat actually turns with them. And so then they like twist back to the right and their seats still look in this. It's just so crazy. The quick release um, things for bike uh, saddles doesn't work for heavy riders. So we double bolt our belt spike saddles in okay. our seat post. So that, you know, it's not going anywhere. Your seat does not wiggle, which is a, a silly little thing, but it makes a big difference. So, well, it's something I, I, another thing I would never think about. And then on the tires, do you use tubes or do you offer tubeless? We are, we are using tubes. We use, um, we use, you know, well, we used to use, um, sorry, I'm having a little bit of a moment, uh, slime, which was a, okay. yep. but I've heard some things that people aren't that thrilled with slime. They've had some challenges. So our newest bikes that are coming in have a, have a padding, a, a layer of padding between the um, tire and the inner tube that works very well to protect the inner tube. Okay. Um, punctures but we haven't gone to the the tubeless tires yet um, I have to no, none of my builders or designers have suggested them and I haven't really pushed it because I ride size bikes <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's something to look into <laughs> yeah I have no idea how that would work um, for a heavier rider um, yeah. but it's just interesting if there's having problems with uh, flats yeah, well, our tires really are, we've built them so they're pretty bomb proof. I mean, I never get flat tires. Now, That's I don't great. think ride as hard or as much as some people, but, you know, it's a very rare problem, just the, the, the strength of our tires. Cool. Yeah. So I see from your website that you offer an indoor cycling package, um, and it includes a wheel on like dumb trainer. Is there a weight capacity for direct drive smart trainers? Direct drive, can you describe exactly what you mean by a direct drive? Where you drive? take the wheel off and you, you, you um, there's a cassette on the actual smart trainer. And so you don't use the rear wheel at all. Yeah, well, um, yes. Uh, there is a, a weight capacity, a uh, weight limit um, and what I realized when I was looking for trainers, because a lot of people want them, you know, because a lot of country doesn't. Especially with COVID. Yeah, with COVID or with winter. Yes. With, you know, I mean, or really. Chicago. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, and, so a lot of people were asking for them. And, and the trainers, um, the one that we sell anyway, it's all steel. It's totally made of steel. Okay. And we do not, we use, because... We have internal gears. We don't have them change out the cassette. We just have them put the bike tire in the trainer. Okay. And attach it with the, um, the cassette that's in there. And it holds up really well. It's, um, I've adapted it. Um, and in my, I mean, I've tested it extensively. I've had many people test it and it's, it's great. It just works. And it's, um, it does wear and tear on the tires a little more, but that's what I was going to ask that you don't yeah. put on a trainer tire. It's just the, the standard tire they use. Well, the reason high. being is because it's kind of a pain to get off a, an, in, an internally geared tire. Yep. Um, most of my riders are not um, hardcore riders. People, a lot of people haven't ridden for 15, 20, 25 years because they got heavy and they haven't felt safe on a bike. And so now they're getting back into it because of COVID. It's a great exercise, being with their family, getting in shape, all the, the typical reasons. But 
Um, so I don't worry so much about people wearing down their tires. Um, they need to pay attention, obviously. I mean, I think, in, like I said, I've been in business for 15 years and I think I've had one person who called me that like they rode their bike, like they were riding it like I don't know, 50 miles a day. And he said, yeah, I broke, I broke my crank. So, you know, how do I get a new crank? So that was, that was easy. But, you know, it's just like, it's just, if you don't ride that much, our bike is built to hold up. If you start riding really heavy duty, there may be parts you need to replace, including the tires. Right. Like if you ride like a demon on your trainer every day, you might need to replace the tire. Okay. But, um, it's, it has not been a problem. Good. So the cycling industry tends to ignore heavier riders actually anybody above like a size two. <laughs> um, and this is true both in their advertising and their product offering. Do you see this mindset shifting? I do, I do, which I think is great, especially in just in general advertising. You know, you actually can find an occasional plus size person in, in ads. Um, and of course it may be that I'm targeted. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I see I'm seeing them too. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Um, however, you know, in, in terms of like, somebody wants to get a bicycle, somebody wants to, um, or we're in that outdoors industries thing where people want to go participate in certain sports and there's just not equipment built for them. Right. And to me that, that is starting to change very, very gradually because of companies like mine. Um, but I think, my whole deal is riding is fun. So why, you know, and everyone's like, oh, you, should, you shouldn't be sitting on your butt. You should be out getting healthy. Well, give me some equipment I can use, right? So I right. can get out there and do it. So it's, it's a love-hate relationship. It's amazing to me. Even people who, you know, are, are plus-size models or very out there blogs, I mean, they still get hate mail. And it's like, really? you know, what, what's, what's the change? But anyway, that's just another thing. So it is changing, but it's not as fast. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least, you know, I think companies are taking notice because it's a market that they haven't addressed. It's a huge market. It's like 30% of the population. Yeah. I'm actually really excited that our bikes are going to be going into REI. Oh, summer. wow. Yeah. So it's, right. it's, a, it's really nice. Um, when will this happen? Um, well, as soon as we can get our bikes in, because like everybody in the biking world right now is, with um, COVID, things are delayed. We've got them on order. So as soon as we get them in, they'll have them. But let's let's say July at this point. Um, and is that all REIs? <laughs> they're going to be um, they're going to be in three REIs, and they're going to be on the web. And they okay. told me actually they sell an incredible amount, like seventy five percent of their bikes on the web, which surprised me so much because so many customers that of mine said, well, where can I try it? You know, right. like they, they want to try them, but so anyways, so, but what's really exciting is REI is all about inclusivity. And so they're planning some kind of an advertising spread on, you know, um, heavier people and, and biking and getting involved in sports. So, and REI has a big voice. So yep. that's, that's, um, that's exciting. I think it'll uh, positively impact uh, people's spirit and hopefully access and our sales too. <laughs> yeah, that, that's super. I'll keep an eye out for it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So um, Zai's Bikes has a private Facebook community. Tell me what that's all about and how can someone join? Yeah, we have a, a Facebook group called Biking for Big People. And it's growing every day. Uh, more and more people are signing up. We encourage people to use it however they want. I mean, not to sell things and not to, you know, not to be spammers or anything, but people use it for like, oh, you know, I was riding and my seat was killing me. Does anybody have any suggestions to, um, does anybody, you know, live around Chicago? I'd like some riding buddies, you know. So, so a typical cy cycling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Except it's more um, focused on, hey, you know, our bodies are not necessarily what what the bikes companies are looking for. So, you know, how do you deal with this problem? Right. No, and it's not just people who buy size bikes. It's it's all anybody who can find a bike that will work for them. Great. So. 
Well, Jonah, I appreciate your time today. If someone wants to find out more about Zai's bikes or purchase one of your bikes or join your community, where can they go? Well, we'd love to have people visit us at zizebikes.com, and that's spelled Z-I-Z-E, bikes, plural. Um, and we we developed a special coupon, Cherry, for your listeners. Oh, wow. So, um, until May 15th, if you've listened to this interview and you're interested, you enter the coupon code ZCC, so that's Zai's coupon code, tricky words, ZCC Talk. And you get 20% off any size bikes. That's so, awesome. That's, so, that's great. I appreciate that. Listening. Well, thank you. We, if anybody's listening and they're, they're on the fence, it's a very good sale. We, we do try to do regular sales to help people, but we really rarely, I don't think we've ever gone higher than 20%. So it's a good deal for you. That definitely is. And yeah. hopefully you can get your bikes in quickly. <laughs> we are taking Summer is here. The people who are willing to wait, but it is yeah. a Everybody wants to bike now. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for watching another Sunflowers and Petals video. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button below and make sure to subscribe and enjoy the ride.